I don't know how they did it. All I know is they did it. I don't think anybody knows how they did it. In the shadows of ancient pyramids and beneath the desert sands, the mysteries of Egypt's advanced technologies whisper of a civilization far ahead of its time. Hieroglyphs and time-worn monuments reveal more than just a rich history. They unveil a legacy of ingenuity that challenges our understanding of the past. From enigmatic structures hinting at global communication networks to artifacts suggesting knowledge of electricity and aviation, ancient Egypt's technological prowess beckons us to explore its secrets. Join us as we journey through time, uncovering the most compelling cases of advanced ancient technology found in Egypt. The Osirian, an enigmatic underground temple. Deep within the ancient city of Abydos, a perplexing mystery lies hidden beneath the sands of time. The Osirian, an underground temple shrouded in enigma, challenges our understanding of ancient Egyptian history and technology. This sprawling complex with its massive granite blocks and precise craftsmanship defies the conventional timeline of Egyptian civilization, hinting at the possibility of a far more ancient origin. One of the most striking anomalies of the Osirian is its lack of inscriptions and decorations, a stark contrast to the typical Egyptian temples adorned with intricate hieroglyphs. This absence of textual evidence has led researchers to question the true age and purpose of the structure. Could it be that the Osirian predates the dynastic period of ancient Egypt, serving as a remnant of a long-lost civilization? The precision and scale of the Osirian's construction are truly breathtaking. Massive granite blocks, some weighing up to 100 tons, form the core of the temple. These colossal stones were transported from the distant quarries of Aswan, over 200 miles away, and fitted together with astounding accuracy. The logistics involved in moving and placing these enormous blocks raise questions about the technological capabilities of the ancient builders. Did they possess advanced machinery or forgotten methods that enabled them to achieve such feats? Perhaps the most intriguing aspect of the Osirian is the mysterious water that continuously flows within its chambers. Despite attempts to pump out the water, it inexplicably returns, defying explanation. Hydrological studies have revealed that the water in the Osirian is remarkably different from the surrounding groundwater, with a unique chemical composition and isotopic profile. This anomaly has led some researchers to speculate about the existence of hidden chambers or passages beneath the temple, possibly connecting to an unknown water source. Some theories suggest that the Osirian could have served as a center for advanced technological or spiritual practices, while others propose that it may have been a repository of ancient wisdom waiting to be rediscovered. The Giza Power Plant Theory, Pyramids as Energy Generators. The Great Pyramid of Giza, one of the world's most iconic structures, has long been a source of fascination and mystery. Standing at an impressive height of 481 feet, and built with an estimated 2.3 million limestone blocks, each weighing between 2.5 to 15 tons, the pyramid's construction has baffled experts for centuries. However, some researchers suggest that the Great Pyramid was not merely a tomb, but an advanced technological marvel designed to harness and distribute energy. The precision and scale of the Great Pyramid's construction are genuinely astounding. The pyramid's base covers an area of 13 acres, with each side measuring 756 feet in length. The ancient builders achieved an extraordinary level of accuracy, with the average deviation from a perfect square being less than 0.1%. This precision, combined with the pyramid's unique interior design, has led some researchers to propose that the structure was built to generate and harness energy. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for the Giza power plant theory is the presence of conductive materials within the pyramid. The Great Pyramid contains several large granite beams, some weighing up to 70 tons, which are highly conductive. Additionally, the pyramid's inner chambers and passages are lined with highly polished limestone, which could have acted as an insulator. This combination of conductive and insulating materials has led some researchers to suggest that the pyramid may have been designed to act as a giant capacitor or battery. 
Another intriguing aspect of the Giza power plant theory is the potential connection between the pyramid, its underground chambers, and the Nile River. Some researchers propose that the pyramid's subterranean chambers and tunnels could have been part of a sophisticated hydraulic system designed to channel water from the Nile River and generate energy through the flow of water. This theory is supported by the discovery of a series of underground channels and shafts, some of which appear to be connected to the Nile. The Giza power plant theory also suggests that the pyramid's location and orientation may have been deliberately chosen to harness the Earth's natural energy fields. The pyramid is situated on a powerful vortex of electromagnetic energy, and its precise alignment with the cardinal directions could have allowed it to channel and amplify this energy. Obelisks, potential energy transmitters. The ancient Egyptian obelisks, monolithic structures carved from single blocks of granite and reaching heights of up to 100 feet, have long been admired for their beauty and precision. Often associated with sun worship, these towering monuments have captivated the imaginations of countless generations. However, some researchers suggest that obelisks may have served a far more practical and even technological purpose, potentially acting as energy transmitters or components in a larger, interconnected power grid. The scale and precision of ancient Egyptian obelisks are truly remarkable. The largest known obelisk, the Lateran Obelisk in Rome, stands at an impressive 105 feet tall and weighs an estimated 455 tons. The process of quarrying, transporting, and erecting these massive monoliths would have required advanced engineering knowledge and sophisticated tools. Some researchers propose that the ancient Egyptians may have used techniques such as acoustic levitation or even anti-gravity technology to move and position these enormous stones. One of the most intriguing theories surrounding the purpose of obelisks is their potential role in generating and transmitting energy. Some researchers suggest that the obelisks, when paired with the pyramids and other structures, could have formed a vast interconnected power grid across the ancient Egyptian landscape. This theory proposes that the obelisks may have acted as antennas or energy transmitters, channeling and dispersing energy generated by the pyramids or other sources. The idea of obelisks as energy transmitters is supported by several factors, including their precise alignment with the cardinal directions, their location on powerful energy vortexes, and their use of conductive materials, such as gold and copper. Some researchers even suggest that the hieroglyphs and symbols carved into the obelisks could have served as a form of coding or instructions for the transmission of energy. Another puzzling aspect of ancient Egyptian obelisks is the question of how they were transported and erected. The most common theory suggests that the obelisks were moved using sleds, rollers, and ramps, with hundreds or even thousands of workers pulling them across the desert. However, some researchers propose that the ancient Egyptians may have used more advanced methods such as the use of levers, pulleys, or even sonic levitation to move these massive stones. The Great Sphinx, mysterious colossal monument. Rising majestically from the Giza Plateau, the Great Sphinx with its lion's body and human head has captivated people's imaginations for centuries. However, beneath the time-worn visage of this iconic statue, lie secrets that have puzzled researchers and challenged our understanding of history. One of the enduring debates surrounding the Great Sphinx is its age. While conventional Egyptology dates the monument to around 2500 BCE, during the reign of Pharaoh Khafre, a growing body of evidence suggests that the Sphinx may be far older. Geologist Robert Schock, after examining the erosion patterns on the Sphinx's enclosure walls, proposed that the monument could date back to as early as 7,000 BCE, a time when the region experienced a much wetter climate. This theory, if proven true, would radically alter our perception of ancient Egyptian civilization and its technological capabilities. Another intriguing theory suggests that the Great Sphinx may have been part of a larger, interconnected complex designed to harness the power of the sun. 
The monument's precise alignment with the rising sun on the spring and autumn equinoxes has led some researchers to speculate that it could have functioned as a solar-powered machine or a sophisticated astronomical tool. The presence of a complex network of chambers and tunnels beneath the Sphinx, revealed by seismic surveys, further fuels this hypothesis, hinting at the possibility of hidden mechanisms or energy-harnessing devices. In recent years, the use of advanced technology, such as ground-penetrating radar and seismic imaging, has provided tantalizing evidence of hidden chambers and passages beneath the Great Sphinx. These discoveries have reignited interest in the monument's true purpose and the secrets it may hold. Some researchers believe that these chambers could contain ancient artifacts, scrolls, or even advanced technological devices waiting to be uncovered. The Saqqara bird and the Abydos hieroglyphs, theories of ancient flight. In the sands of Egypt, two small artifacts have sparked a heated debate about the possibility of aeronautical knowledge and flying technology in ancient times, the Saqqara bird and the Abydos hieroglyphs. These enigmatic objects have puzzled researchers and enthusiasts alike, raising intriguing questions about the extent of ancient Egyptian innovation and the potential for lost or forgotten technologies. The Saqqara Bird, a small wooden statuette discovered in 1898 in the tomb of Padimen in Saqqara, immediately captured the attention of researchers due to its uncanny resemblance to a modern airplane. Measuring seven inches long and weighing less than 1.4 ounces, the bird features wings mounted on a narrow body with a vertical stabilizer on its tail. Notably, the bird is missing legs and its wings exhibit an advanced aerodynamic shape reminiscent of aircraft wings rather than typical depictions of birds in ancient Egyptian art. Some researchers, such as Egyptian doctor and model airplane enthusiast Khalil Masiha, have proposed that the Saqqara bird is evidence of ancient Egyptian knowledge of aeronautical principles and may have served as a model glider. Masiha built a scaled-up model of the bird and found that it exhibited remarkable gliding capabilities leading him to suggest that the ancient Egyptians had a sophisticated understanding of aerodynamics and may have even experimented with flying machines. Similarly, the Abydos hieroglyphs found in the Temple of Seti I in Abydos have fueled speculation about ancient Egyptian flying technology. These wall carvings, discovered by Dr. Ruth Hover, depict what appear to be modern vehicles, including helicopters, submarines, and airplanes. While some scholars argue that these carvings are merely the result of palimpsests or the layering of hieroglyphs over time, others see them as evidence of a highly advanced civilization with knowledge of aerial and underwater transportation. The Saqqara bird and the Abydos hieroglyphs are not the only artifacts that have prompted theories of ancient flight in Egypt. Other examples include the enigmatic relief carvings at the Temple of Ptah in Memphis, which depict a human figure seated in a pod-like object with what appear to be wings or blades and the curious helicopter hieroglyphs found in the Temple of Osiris at Abydos, which bear a striking resemblance to modern rotorcraft. Tutankhamun's Meteoric Dagger, a marvel of ancient metallurgy. In 1922, Howard Carter's discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb stunned the world, revealing a treasure trove of ancient Egyptian artifacts and offering unprecedented insights into the life of a young pharaoh. Among the many marvels uncovered within the tomb was a small, unassuming dagger that would later prove to be one of the most enigmatic and technologically advanced objects of its time, Tutankhamun's meteoric dagger. At first glance, the dagger appeared to be a work of exceptional craftsmanship, with its gold handle and sheath adorned with intricate designs. However, it was the blade itself that really caught researchers' attention. Unlike the bronze blades typical of the period, Tutankhamun's dagger was forged from iron, a material that was incredibly rare and valuable in ancient Egypt. Subsequent analyses of the dagger's composition revealed that it was not just any iron, but meteoric iron, containing significant levels of nickel and cobalt. This discovery raised intriguing questions about the ancient Egyptians' understanding of metallurgy and their ability to work with such a challenging material. The process of forging a blade from meteoric iron would have required advanced knowledge of smelting, heating, and hammering techniques, 
skills that were not thought to have been developed until much later in human history. The presence of meteoric iron in Tutankhamun's dagger also sheds light on the ancient Egyptians' fascination with the heavens and their belief in the divine origins of certain materials. Meteoric iron, known as iron from the sky, was considered a sacred substance imbued with the power of the gods. The use of this celestial material in the creation of a royal dagger suggests that it held profound symbolic and spiritual significance. One of the most remarkable aspects of Tutankhamun's meteoric dagger is the level of craftsmanship and skill required to shape and polish the blade. The iron from meteorites is typically harder and more brittle than terrestrial iron, making it difficult to work with using traditional Bronze Age tools. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. One of the most intriguing pieces of pre-Egyptian technology left by an advanced civilization that disappeared is their astonishing stone carving and metallurgy. Some structures found in Egypt are so intricate that even with modern tools, replicating them would be a challenge. But the most mysterious is the black-colored schist disc, also known as the Disc of Sabu. This meticulously crafted stone object features a design strikingly similar to modern machinery. Measuring approximately two feet in diameter, the schist disc is made from a fragile stone called metasilt stone, or schist. Its precision and complexity are remarkable. The disc features three equidistant curved lobes separated by small drill holes and a central hub with a thin hollow tube. The thinness of the lobes and overall delicacy has puzzled experts as the required tools and techniques were thought beyond ancient Egyptian craftsmen. Intriguingly, the schist disc resembles modern-day impellers, a key component in centrifugal pumps and turbines. This has led some researchers to propose that the disc could be part of a larger, more advanced mechanism, possibly used for irrigation, water management, or even energy generation. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments. The Dendera Light, Evidence of Ancient Lighting Technology. In the Hathor Temple at Dendera, Egypt, a series of enigmatic carvings have sparked a heated debate about the potential use of electricity in ancient times. These reliefs, dating back to the Ptolemaic period, depict what appear to be light bulb-like objects, complete with snake-like filaments and lotus-shaped bases. The Dendera light reliefs show figures holding aloft large elongated objects that bear a striking resemblance to modern-day light bulbs. The objects are depicted with snake-like forms inside, which some researchers interpret as filaments. The bases of the objects are lotus-shaped, with a peculiar device beneath them that seems to be connected to a power source. This combination of elements has led some to propose that the ancient Egyptians may have had access to a form of electrical lighting. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Dendera light theory is the absence of soot in some Egyptian temples. In the Hathor temple, for example, the ceilings and walls are free from the black residue typically associated with the use of torches or oil lamps. This lack of soot suggests that the ancient Egyptians may have used an alternative, cleaner light source, such as electrical lighting. Proponents of the Dendera light theory, such as electrical engineer Walter Garn, have created working replicas based on the temple reliefs. These experiments demonstrate that a device similar to the Dendera light could produce a viable, if dim, light source. However, Skeptics argue that the reliefs are merely symbolic representations of mythological scenes and that there is no concrete evidence of electrical lighting in ancient Egypt. The Serapium of Saqqara, enigmatic granite boxes and precision craftsmanship. Deep beneath the shifting sands of Saqqara, an ancient necropolis near the famed Steppe Pyramid, lies a perplexing marvel of engineering and craftsmanship, the Serapium. This subterranean complex, a labyrinth of tunnels and chambers, is home to 24 colossal black granite boxes, each weighing up to 100 tons and displaying a level of precision that defies explanation. These enigmatic containers have baffled archaeologists and researchers for centuries, raising questions about their purpose and the ancient technology used to create them. The boxes of the Serapium, measuring up to 13 feet in length, 11 feet in width, 
and nine feet in height, are crafted from solid blocks of black granite, one of the hardest stones known to mankind. The precision with which these boxes were cut and polished is astonishing, with perfectly flat surfaces, precise 90-degree angles, and intricately fitted lids. The scale and accuracy of these artifacts seem to surpass the capabilities of Bronze Age tools, leading many to question the mainstream explanations for their creation. According to conventional Egyptology, the Serapium was built during the reign of Pharaoh Kaemweset in the 13th century BCE to house the mummified remains of sacred Apis bulls. However, inconsistencies in this theory have fueled speculation about the true purpose of the granite boxes. Some researchers argue that the absence of inscriptions, decorations, or any trace of the supposed mummified bulls within the boxes suggests that they may have served a different, more technologically advanced purpose. The questions surrounding the Serapium extend beyond the boxes themselves. The logistics of transporting these immense stone containers into the underground chambers through narrow tunnels and shafts pose significant engineering challenges. The precision and scale of the Serapium's construction, with its perfectly aligned corridors and symmetrical layout, hint at a level of technological sophistication that seems incongruous with the tools and techniques of the time. The Valley Temple of Khafra, Precision and Anomalies. At the foot of the Great Sphinx of Giza lies the Valley Temple of Khafra, an ancient marvel that showcases the extraordinary precision and engineering prowess of its builders. Constructed with massive limestone blocks weighing up to 150 tons and faced with polished red granite, this temple has endured for thousands of years, bearing witness to the rise and fall of civilizations. One of the most striking features of the Valley Temple is the use of enormous precisely cut limestone blocks in its construction. These blocks, some of which measure up to 18 feet in length and weigh as much as 150 tons, were transported from quarries located miles away and fitted together with such precision that a thin blade cannot be inserted between them. The level of accuracy achieved in the cutting and placement of these blocks is astounding especially considering the tools and techniques believed to have been available at the time. Another puzzling aspect of the Valley Temple is the presence of advanced engineering techniques, such as the use of square sockets and projecting bosses to secure the granite-facing stones to the limestone core. These methods, which are not found in other ancient Egyptian structures of the same period, suggest that the builders of the Valley Temple possessed a sophisticated understanding of construction principles and had access to advanced tools and technologies. Despite its impressive construction, the Valley Temple is curiously devoid of inscriptions or decorations, unlike most other ancient Egyptian temples. This lack of ornamentation has led some researchers to question the temple's true age and purpose. Some have suggested that the Valley Temple may have been built by a civilization that predated the ancient Egyptians, one with access to advanced technologies and knowledge that were lost or forgotten over time. The Valley Temple also shares striking similarities with other enigmatic structures, such as the Osirian in Abydos and the Sphinx Temple, which is located just adjacent to the Valley Temple. These similarities, including the use of massive limestone blocks, precision engineering, and the absence of inscriptions, have led some researchers to propose that these structures may have been part of a larger, interconnected complex built by a highly advanced civilization for purposes that remain unknown. Egyptian Inventions, a legacy of innovation and ingenuity. Ancient Egypt is renowned for its awe-inspiring monuments, sophisticated art, and enduring mythology, but its contributions to human innovation extend far beyond these well-known achievements. From everyday objects to groundbreaking technologies, the ancient Egyptians left an indelible mark on the world, with many of their inventions still influencing our lives today. One of the most notable Egyptian inventions is papyrus, a precursor to modern paper. Made from the stems of the papyrus plant, this writing material revolutionized record-keeping and communication in the ancient world. The Egyptians also developed a form of cursive writing known as hieratic script, which allowed for faster and more efficient recording of information compared to the older hieroglyphic system. 
In the realm of personal grooming and hygiene, the ancient Egyptians were pioneers. They created many cosmetic products, including eye makeup, skin creams, and perfumes, and wigs made from human hair or plant fibers. Dental care was also a priority, with the invention of toothpaste made from mint, salt, and dried iris flowers, and breath mints made from frankincense and myrrh. The ancient Egyptians also contributed greatly to timekeeping and astronomy. They developed the 365-day calendar, which was based on the lunar cycle and the flooding of the Nile River. They also created sundials and water clocks, which allowed for more accurate tracking of time throughout the day. In addition, the Egyptians were skilled astronomers with a deep understanding of the movement of celestial bodies and their influence on agriculture and religious ceremonies. In the field of engineering and construction, the ancient Egyptians were truly unparalleled. They developed sophisticated surveying and leveling techniques, which enabled them to build the pyramids and other monumental structures with incredible precision. They also invented the ramp and lever, which allowed them to transport and position massive stone blocks weighing several tons. The ancient Egyptians also made significant strides in agriculture and irrigation. They developed the shaduf, a type of water lifting device that made irrigation more efficient, and the nilometer, a tool used to measure the water level of the Nile River during the annual flood season. This allowed them to predict the success of their crops and plan accordingly. They were also pioneers in medicine and healthcare. They developed a variety of medical treatments, encompassing surgery, herbal remedies, and even prosthetic limbs. They established medical schools, known as Houses of Life, where aspiring physicians could hone their skills and contribute to the ever-evolving body of medical knowledge. Egyptian physicians possessed a remarkable understanding of anatomy, trauma, and treatment, as evidenced by groundbreaking discoveries such as the Edwin Smith Papyrus. This medical text, dating back to 1500 BC, systematically documents 48 cases of traumatic injury to various body parts. It meticulously details the closure of wounds with sutures, the prevention of infection using honey and moldy bread, and the immobilization of fractures using splints and bandages fashioned from linen and wood. Other ancient papyri, such as the Ebers and Cahoon, delve into a wide range of medical topics, including gynecology, fertility, contraception, intestinal disease, and more. While many remedies involved magical incantations, the Egyptians' empirical observations of illness were remarkably sophisticated for their time. The Jed Pillar, an enigmatic symbol of ancient Egypt. Amidst the countless wonders and mysteries of ancient Egypt, the Jed Pillar stands as a timeless symbol, its true meaning and significance shrouded in the mists of time. This enigmatic emblem, often associated with the god Osiris and the concept of stability and regeneration, has captivated the minds of researchers and enthusiasts for centuries. At first glance, the Jed Pillar appears to be a simple, stylized representation of a column or pillar with four horizontal bars or capitals stacked atop a vertical shaft. This design, while seemingly straightforward, belies a deeper complexity and potential significance. Some researchers have noted the striking resemblance between the Jed Pillar and the later diagrams of Nikola Tesla, the brilliant inventor and pioneer of modern electricity. Tesla's designs often featured a vertical column with horizontal plates or coils, bearing a remarkable similarity to the ancient Egyptian symbol. This resemblance has led some intrepid researchers to propose a fascinating theory. Could the Jed Pillar be a representation of an ancient Egyptian understanding of electricity and its potential applications? While mainstream Egyptology has long interpreted the Jed Pillar as a purely religious or mythological symbol, the idea that it could encode scientific knowledge is not as far-fetched as it may seem. Some proponents of this theory point to the use of the Jed Pillar in ancient Egyptian texts and artwork, where it is often depicted in association with the concepts of power, energy, and the life-giving force of the universe. They argue that these associations could be interpreted as metaphorical references to the properties of electricity, 
with the Jed Pillar serving as a symbolic representation of this invisible yet omnipresent energy. Others have taken this idea even further, suggesting that the ancient Egyptians may have actually harnessed the power of electricity in their temples and monuments. They point to the presence of highly conductive materials, such as gold and copper, in the construction of these structures, and the peculiar layout and orientation of certain chambers and passages, which could have served to channel and amplify electrical currents. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.